you talk about miracles happening, well, in the sense it was a miracle that he, he did uh, walk away, or did he swim away? I'm not sure. Beer sand from God, that's what it sounds like. Just, I just couldn't believe it. It's just beer everywhere. Some people say it was an act of God, but to me, I think it was, uh, it was a downfall of the Moorlambar Mustangs under 19. <laughs> About 2.15am on Tuesday, the 10th of April this year, uh, a semi-trailer was travelling north on the Pacific Highway through Mwollomba. And he hit this medium strip just here, broke his right front axle. Uh, the truck lost control and went in the river. When they went to pick the truck up, um, from what I've been told, they just cut the tarps and let the uh, load go into the river. It's the only way they could pick the truck up, uh, they couldn't pick it up fully loaded. Friday the 13th being Easter, Good Friday, and the Pacific Highway being so busy, the RTA um, gave him a deadline at midnight to get off the road. So we had, we had no choice, we had to stop our work and come back in a few days' time, when, just after Easter. Which they did, uh, but they left, uh, they left it there, they left us, there was no security there. Just perfect timing for it for us. Long weekend, everyone went, yeah, let's go to the river. It's really ironic, isn't it? You can't buy uh, beer on Good Friday and here it is in copious quantities. Now it's people from like... Queensland to Victoria, coming through New South Wales going, what the hell is going on? You couldn't get parking space around it. At that stage, on the first day, we believed that, uh, well, we were told by the police that it was pretty much open slather. Get in there and steal it while you can. <laughs> uh, as far as they're concerned, they weren't, they were concerned they weren't stealing it. But from a technical point, uh, as far as the law goes, it is stealing by fine. That's the name of the offence. When we were over in the river, we were just swimming down. You grab a beer and crack it out at the same time, have a few hips of it and throw it back in the water and go down and grab some more. <laughs> a friend of mine and myself went down there on the wave runners and we had a look, see what was going on down there. And I said, oh, well, we'll come back. So we come back and got a canoe. And we towed the canoe down with the wave runner, but we had too much beer in it on the way back and we sunk it. <laughs> well, everyone had their own way. Okay? Like I was telling you, ours was the crate with the ropes on it. And everyone thought that was a mean idea after they saw us do that, that kind of turned into the craze. They had hoses and all kinds of things because they thought they could breathe underwater with a garden hose. <laughs> I saw people using even spears, trying to spear the plastic and bring up crates, but it just wouldn't work. I was waiting for it to float past. OK, and you go up, you go under the bodyboard, and the next thing you know, people would just be grabbing off the top of your bodyboard and putting in their own crate. So you had to have someone kind of on the bank, someone with the car, holding all the beer, and two divers with one person in the water with them. So you kind of had to work as a team when you were getting it. Our under-19 team's got a few larrikins in it, and we decided we'd do some extra training one night. When they heard that the beer truck had gone into the river, they decided that, um, you know, swimming or diving would be a really good thing to do. Yeah, we filled up the whole boot of a VL up to the brim, so we could just close it, and half a boot of a Hyundai XL. From every, every, all the stories I've heard, the guys from the rowing club did the best. No, I've got two dreams in life and one's just been fulfilled, you know, like <laughs> diving for beer in the river. They were determined to get everything in, they did eventually. I noticed one vehicle, when he shut the back door, the uh, tyres were sitting on the, on the, uh, on the mud guard. And they say that it, up at the hospital it was the worst weekend they ever had with um, like cut feet and hands and what have you. Um, one fella in particular who's quite a talented young footballer, we were counting on him pretty heavily in the, in the semis, but... Uh, he stood on a bottle down in the mud, a broken bottle, and cut underneath his toe and got a couple of stitches. Yeah, we lost him for the rest of the, rest of the, the uh, series, the rest of the semis. If that happened in America, like, it would not be like that. Like, Australians just get in there and do what they have to do, get fun, get in there and down and dirty to get the beer. Like Americans would have been going, oh, look at the river, there's all glass at the bottom, but like, no one cared. In the next few weeks, they were all drinking beers before training, after training, before football, after football, so yeah, it was different. Well, there was one other beer that they had there, they called it MSBs, it was some sort of Irish beer or something like that, and because of the name MSB, everyone decided to get to call it the Merbar Swamp Beer. So everyone's going around, yeah, they get into that Merbar Swamp Beer and all this kind of stuff. There's a lot of hard work by cleaning them all, because they've had all the diesel and shit on them. But I've got a good wife because I took them home to her and she cleaned every single one of them. 
They were all starting to go rusty on the top just that little bit because of the salt water and everything. But we didn't care, we just kept drinking them anyway. And then just turned into havoc, just party after party, free party, free beer, no one cared. Everyone was shouting everyone, everyone who gave someone one of their beers, one of his beers, it didn't matter, it was free, so it was crazy. Crazy town at the time. It just You've never seen Mobile or anything like it. And we'd nearly run out of alcohol, and the, there was this car down the back, and everyone was getting it out of the boot, and someone snapped a key off inside. So we all went down there with big screwdrivers and hammers and put holes in the back of the boot just so we could get it out. Uh, by the time they sent the divers down to get the rest of it, there was none left. It was cleaned out pretty well. Uh, the lugs have done a very good job, actually, extremely good. The image of the carcass being stripped out in the middle of the desert, it happened pretty quickly. So the locals did the job of clearing the river, which had to be done as far as the, um, the environment was concerned. The issue was there that uh, they were in actual fact committing an offence, but there's one of those things, they all got away with it. For the crash, well, we might have had one or two wins, so we weren't going that good. After the crash, we didn't have any wins, I think. <laughs> yeah, I thought we might have been able to slip in there, but I think the beer truck brought us undone. Everyone got a free beer, put it that way. Even if you weren't in the river, you got a free beer, just because it was just like, yeah, who cares, if you know what I mean, it's free. The only people who didn't get a drink were the coppers, that was about it. <laughs> it was a pretty happy time in town for a while. It was like this was the best thing that had happened to Moolumba for a very long time. Pretty amazing, it's like once in a lifetime thing put Mobar on the map. Made Easter great, it was like a, two Easter's at once, <laughs> beer and eggs together. <laughs>